Hello everyone, my name is Danny, and this is my review for Acrimony. Acrimony. In Tyler Perry's sexy and electrifying thriller, a faithful wife is driven over the edge when it becomes clear she has been betrayed by her devious husband. This is a 2018 film running two hours, rated R, and it stars Taraji P. Henson, Lyric Bent, Crystal Stewart, Jasmine Simone, Patasha Story, Ajona Alexis, Antonio Madison, Brescia Webb, Daniel Nicolette, Nelson Estevez, Kendrick Cross. There you go. I said all the names. There you go. Well, the first thing I wrote down for my notes was lots of cussing. Lots of naughty words. Uh, it kind of ruined it for me right away. I didn't know it was going to be in that style. It was just nonstop. It's a little bit sickening. It's a little bit of acrimony for me. By the way, the definition of acrimony, which this movie kind of forgets about, is bitterness or ill feeling. I think this movie is trying to go a little bit over acrimony to pissed off little woman. So I think there could have been some other name more devious and more crazy for this movie other than acrimony. But... Yeah. Okay, here we go. The story is very weak. Um, it starts off kind of nice, and I thought it was going to like go somewhere and actually be a real movie and do something, but all the supporting characters are hovering around the whole time. The same thing happens over and over again, and nobody's learning a lesson. And we have this narrative from Taraji saying all these different things that she's doing are mistakes. And she's like, will you listen to me as a young woman? I actually just said that. I'm like, yeah, you said something stupid. And we're having to watch you do that stupid thing. So why am I watching this movie? If you know it's stupid, we know it's stupid, and it happened, that makes the movie stupid. Sorry, that's how the math works. There's some obvious things like... When Robert and Melinda burned through her inheritance, if she got that much money, then where are the other sisters' inheritance? This whole movie could have been solved right there by letting the sisters just kind of take care of the situation. But nope, they have to go through this elaborate scheme of trying to get Robert a job so that all the rest of the family doesn't lose their business. They like, you know, it's like they stake the rest of their lives on him trying to hold down a job. A lot of confusing things like that. Then this movie turns into a guy cheering for the guy. This woman character of Melinda, she just assumes the worst. Uh, I, you know, have experience in my life of a woman like that. Obviously, things didn't work out, you know, for them here in this movie. It usually doesn't. When women just assume the worst, I mean, life can be hard. You can have financial trouble. You can love a person but not really like them. You can be married to them, and all this is going on. And you're not really being true to things as a woman if you're just assuming the worst of things. Sometimes us guys are just down on our luck. And we just haven't hit it, you know, uh, our luck, lucky path at the right time. And this movie is the example of that. And I'm kind of glad that it ends up being that way for the guy, to be honest. I ended up cheering for him. And then this Melinda ends up being mad at the whole world and like she actually 
you know, has moments as a younger woman and as an older woman of, you know, saying lines like, you know what kind of bee I can be and you know, you know, how mad I get, uh, you know, just all this stuff about her anger. Any woman, especially in a movie, who's mad at the world is not going to be flexible. She's not going to be deserving of things because if you can't control your own temper, temper, then you're not going to be considering anybody else's feelings at all. And so I just kind of was sitting through that and everything. When it started getting into the real thing here, I actually was invested because it kind of tried like it was going in the way of Social Network, which is one of the best movies of my generation. So when it starts talking about Robert hitting big on this idea of his and this invention, I'm like, oh, that's what causes her acrimony is that, you know, he's going to finally get it. You know, what he wants in life. It just took a little while. And um, it's just going to be crazy, you know. So when it tries to be like social network and she wants her money, I'm like, yep, okay. This movie has a purpose. Okay, let's not ruin this. Then it has this scene. And anybody who's seen this movie knows what I'm talking about. There is a point where he first goes to a meeting about his invention and he doesn't get the offer he wanted. That's the day where everything blows up. Taraji P. Henson's character goes crazy. She wants a divorce. She thinks, you know, this guy's just a loser. It's all about money. It's all about her. It's all about her attitude. It's all about struggling. You know, everything. You know, there's just no... Standing by the husband who is trying his best to make his dream come true. And from that point on, I checked out. I checked out of this movie. It gets so horrible. It gets so hard to watch that there's just nothing left for the for the rest of it. It doesn't end up being like Social Network because he, as a goodwill gesture... Gives her what she deserves of all this money in her mom's house back and all this. And she can't just be like, oh, yay. No, you know, she turns into this automatic gold digger. And that's where acrimony comes from is her being bitter. Well, that's not really the right word for it. But she is bitter because she wants more. And, uh, you know, if this movie were true to its character and she was this great wife as they were growing up. She would be happy getting back anything, and she would have gone on with the ten million dollars that Robert gives her, and just lived her life, and you know forgot about Robert if he was so horrible. And that's really what changes her is the money. Then every scene after that, I want a divorce scene. Things are up and down. Things are going this way, that way. She should have been in jail. She gets warned twice that she should be in jail. She does this. She does that. I mean, she gets caught. And then that last scene, I'm not even going to talk about. I'm telling you, people, when I watched this movie um, and I watched the last half hour, I'm like, this might be the worst movie I've ever seen. It might be. It was... It was so awful all the way through with the supporting cast and these two main characters trying to make things work but given horrible lines to tell each other. And they just kind of end up repeating things. And the guy says the most obvious thing like five times that she wanted a divorce. That's what caused this whole thing was that she did what she thought she should do and she asked for a divorce. He ends up becoming a millionaire after that. That's not his problem. He tried to talk to her. He tried to tell her to hang in there and believe in him. She didn't want to. This might be the worst movie I've ever seen because of the ending. It is god awful. I'm not even going to ask all the questions I have. 
but some of them are like, you know, how did she get on the boat? How did she not get discovered by all this staff? How'd she find the wedding dress without anybody seeing her? It's a boat. It's not like a mansion or anything. And I mean, like, the ending was just like, oh my gosh. And then we don't know if Robert's okay. And I mean, come on. It's like, this is the most silly thing. And like, people actually made their time to make this. And it's such a piece of crap that I just am ashamed of it. And I'm sorry that I saw it. I'm sorry I wasted my time. I wanted to turn it off as soon as she asked for a divorce because I know it I knew it was gonna go downhill after that. I did not want to watch the rest of this, but I did. So the worst grade I give as a movie reviewer to movies, because I know what it takes to make these things, even though they're horrible, is a D minus. Cause I don't want to give it an F because I don't believe in Fs because movies are made to enjoy and so they're not an F. That's that's a cruel grade for anybody that gives that out. So D minus for acrimony. Please don't watch it if you haven't seen it. Please don't waste your time. Some people in this world thought the Forty Shades of Grey two movies so far have been the worst movies ever made. This is worse. Trust me. Okay. So thanks a lot, guys. My name's Danny. If you like this or any of my other videos, try and give some of them a watch. Like and subscribe to my channel if you would. And enjoy your movies, just not this. Thanks.